when we talk about set theory, it is a part of mathematics that can go very far. There's a lot in there. We are this series of videos is starting right from scratch, from the basics. So this is not advanced set theory. This is an introduction to set theory. So let's talk about sets. A set is a collection of objects. The objects are called elements of the set. And there's different ways to denote sets. One is what we call tabulation. So let's give this set a name. We call it set A, and capital numbers are very often, or capital letters, sorry, are very often used to give to name sets. So if set A is the set with the numbers 1, 2, 3, and 4 in it, we call this way of writing a set tabulation. I tabulated everything. I listed everything in the set. Then I can say, well, I can see that 4 is an element of the set. So this is the symbol we use for element. 1 is an element of the set. 5 is not an element of the set. So that is some notation. I can also have a set B. In tabulation, I don't have to name them all. I can say 1, 2, 3, 4, carry on in the same way up to 10. This is still an example of tabulation because I can list them all all the elements in that set. Now the next way to represent a set is called set builder notation. So for that we give you a way how the set is built. So I say the set P is the set of all the numbers X given X is a natural number and X is less than 5. So rather than tabulate it, I give you a description of what the elements of the set looks like. Now, this line I drew here means given that. Sometimes a colon is used as well, but I'm just telling you it's x's and that's what they look like. Now, this set can be tabulated because it's just natural numbers, less than five, so that's one, two, three, and four. It looks very much like the set A, but we can write it in different ways. But there's also cases where we don't want to tabulate a number, or we can't tabulate a, a set. If I say the set Q is all the real numbers, X, given X is less than 5, all the real numbers smaller than 5. Can you list them? No. There's no way to list all of them because there's an infinite number of them. There's also no pattern to it, so I can't just go 1, 2, 3, 4, dot, dot, dot. So... We need set builder notation, especially if we are not able to tabulate a set. All right, some sets you've already encountered. Natural numbers, integers, rational numbers, real numbers. Just pause here if you're not familiar with them to just familiarize yourself with those sets. Now, just take note of some variations of notation. If I talk about N0... What I'm saying is it's all the natural numbers and include zero in the lot. So I've got zero, one, two, three, and so on. If I say Z plus, it's all the integers that are positive. So that's one, two, three, and so on. So these are some alternative to the notations. If I say Z minus with a zero on, that means it's the negative numbers including zero. Negative integers including zero and so on. R plus, R minus, similarly the positive real numbers, the negative real numbers. So those are some of variations of the notation of existing sets that you know. All right, now two very spe special sets. The empty set doesn't sound like much, but it is important. It's a set with no elements in, and it's denoted by the symbol phi. So that's the empty set. Another way to denote it is having the curly brackets with nothing in between. So those are two ways to denote an empty set, a set with no elements. It's still a set, but it doesn't have anything in. If you want to think of a bag, that's empty. It's an empty set. Now, just watch out for the following. If I've got curly brackets with that symbol in, this is not the empty set because there's something inside these curly brackets. There's a set inside the set, but that set is empty. So it's like having an empty bag inside a bag. So watch out. That's not the denotion of the empty set. These two are the two denotions of the empty set. The other 
special set is what we call the universal set. So the universal set is the set of all objects under consideration in a particular case, and we use the letter U. There's not just one universal set. It depends what am I looking at. If I'm, a looking, look, if I'm studying all the students registered in a specific class, the universal set is all those students in that class, and then I can look at different things about that set. If I'm looking at all real numbers and you're working with them, then that is my universal set. So we need to say what the universal set is if it is not given. All right, so let's just look at some sets that we've got here. Tabulate the following sets. They're given in set builder notation. And some different ways of writing it, just to get you used to it. If we had to tabulate it, all the natural numbers given they're less than six. That's one, two, three, four, and five. The set of all two A's given A is a natural number. So that sort of gives me a, a formula, a recipe to find all the elements of the set. For every natural number, I multiply it with two. So it's two times one, two times two, two times three, two times four. And I wrote four, but I meant eight, and so on. So this set has an infinite number of elements, but there's a pattern. All the integers between minus four and three. So what's the first integer? Minus four is not included. So it's going to be minus three, minus two. Minus 1, 0, 1, 2. Is 3 included in the set? Yes. Because it said less than or equal to. So that's tabulating sets that are on set builder notation. If I'm given sets that are tabulated, I can write it in set builder notation. Now, it's not a unique representation, set builder notation. We can use different ways to say the same thing. This set, for example, I can say the set of all x's, given x is a natural number. And x is between 3 and 11. It stops at 10, but that's the first natural number less than 11. So you could say it like that, or you could say a 3 is included, so it's included. Or you could say between 2 and 11, or from 3 to 10, including both. So there's different ways of representing it. Not 1, 2, 3, 4. Oh, that's a very boring one. If I want to tabulate it. I also write in set builder notation. I can write it. It's all x's in the integers given. Now you'll see there's two different ways of writing it. We're still saying the same thing. All the integers given that integer is greater than or equal to zero. So all positive integers. Or you can say it's all natural numbers including zero. One, three, five, seven. Right. And so on. There's a couple of ways to write that. That's all. The natural numbers, you can say given x is odd. All the natural numbers that are odd. Or you can use a formula to calculate the odd numbers. So there's different ways to tab write tabulated set in set builder notation. All right, next thing is the concept of a subset and a proper subset. Now, a subset, if A is a subset of B, this is how we write it then that means every element in A is also in B. So for every X in A, X is also in B. That is a subset. Now, a proper subset, we'll look at shortly. And we'll look at the rest of this page, but let's just get a feeling for what a subset is. If I've got a set 1, 4, 9, and I want to write down all the subsets of that set. Now, a subset, something is a subset of this set W, if every element of the first set is in the second set. So... Here's an example. The set with just the element 1 in, that's a subset of W, because every element in this set is also in W. Well, then the set with 4 in is also a subset of W. You can see where we're going with this. The set of 9 in is also a subset of W. But there's a couple more. What about the set with 1 and 4 in? Is that a subset of W? Yes, because 1 is in W and 4 is in W. So then the set with 1 and 9 in is also a subset of W, because 1 is in W and 9 is in W. Well, then the next obvious one is the set with 4 and 9 in. That's a subset of W, because 4 is in W and 9 is in W. All right, now there's two very special subsets that we might miss. So, firstly, the set with 1, 4, and 9 in, meaning the whole of W is also a subset of W, because the definition of subset says 
This first set is a subset of the second one if every element in the first set is also in the second one. 1 is in W, 4 is in W, and 9 is in W. So every set is a subset of itself. And now the next one that takes a little bit of creative thinking is the empty set is a subset of any set. All right. So we're going to use the opposite of the definition. The definition says it's a subset if every element of the first set is also in the second set. Now I'm going to say, well, can you show me an element of the empty set that is not in W? You cannot find one that's not there, so the empty set is a subset of W. All right. Now, looking at a proper subset. A proper subset is a little bit of a stronger definition. One set is a proper subset of another one. This is how we write it, sort of without that equal sign at the bottom. It's a proper subset if it's firstly a subset and there's at least one element in B that's not in A. All right, one element in B that's not in A. So let's take a look at this set W. The proper subset of W. One is a proper subset of W. Why? Because there's an element. One is a subset of W and there's still something in W that's not in this set. Four and nine. Four is a proper subset of W. Why? Because four is a subset of W, but there's still something in W that's not in that set. Nine is a proper subset of W. Because 9 is a subset of W, but there's still something in W that's not in 9. 1 and 4. And so on. 1, 4 is a proper subset of W. 1, 9 is a proper subset of W. 4, 9 is a proper subset of W. Okay, so let's just see. Is the whole of W a proper subset of W? Well, it's a proper subset if it's a subset. That part we have. But is there anything in W that's not in the first set? No, there's nothing. So... A set is not a proper subset of itself. What about the empty set? The empty set is a proper subset of W. If it's a subset, then we've got that. Is there still something in W that's not in the empty set? Yes, of 1, a 4, and a 9. So those are all the proper subsets of W. So the subset and the proper subset have got a lot in common. The only thing is the whole set itself is a subset of itself, but not a proper subset of itself. All right. One more thing. We're going to come back to this page again. But if we talk about the power set of a set, a power set is a set of all the subsets. All right. A power set is the set of all the subsets. So if I've got all the subsets, if I make a new set and I list all the subsets. So the power, let me do it down here. The power set of W. Is that set with all the subsets? So there's a set full of sets. One, four, nine, one, four, one, nine, four, nine. Then I still have one, four, nine, and the empty set. That's the power set. So if you hear about a power set, it's a set consisting of all subsets. Because remember, a set is just a collection of elements. Of objects and the objects here is sets. So I've got a set full of sets. All right. Just take note that two sets are equal if they've got the same elements. So it's a very normal definition, natural. It makes sense if sets have the same elements, they are equal. In our next section, we're going to look at some more types of sets that we can get.